Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. First of all, can I say, wow. <laughs> Um, my favorite story about this library, when we were in the initial discussions with the architects, and I said, you know, people keep saying we're a Sears Roebuck town. Well, I want a Bergdorf Goodman library. <laughs> I think we got one. <laughs> Jane was there at the beginning, and she inspired all of us. And she really drove the construction of this uh, facility, and it is much bigger, much better, because of Jane's uh, involvement. And Slover obviously has uh, lots of books, lots of technology, fabulous history, but the Slover is much more than that. Slover is a place. This is called placemaking. This is this is a place to convene for a variety of reasons: for fun, for education, uh, for thoughtful conversation. That's what makes it different. And what makes it so special as a space is really making it a true destination for families and people from all walks of life. We have created a sense of place in Norfolk for, for people from the entire region to come and learn about their history, talk about the community, debate the issues of the day. I think that's a, a major contribution. What makes this building so special for me particularly is it's the best of both worlds. We have the Seaboard Building, built in 1899, completed in 1900, that was Norfolk's federal courthouse and post office, and later City Hall, and now it's the home for the Sargent Memorial Collection, where the local uh, repository history, and then the new Slover Library, a modern landmark in its own right, and then the Selden Arcade. We have the best of uh, architecture and modern technology all in one. This library is a fantastic example of what a public-private partnership can do for a city. Uh, a city the size of Norfolk with a $65 million library is extraordinary, probably unprecedented in the country. The idea of a public-private partnership in which uh, enlightened citizens understand the importance of free public libraries. This is a 21st century version of what Andrew Carnegie did for the uh, free public library system in this country. The early uh, design, or at least uh, drawings of the library, was sort of a traditional 40,000 square foot facility that would sit between um, the Selden Arcade and the Seaboard Building here and, you know, and, and sort of leak into the Seaboard Building. But as Jane's involvement grew, the notion of the beautiful renovation of the Seaboard Building occurred, as well as moving into the um, Selden Arcade and built this beautiful facility in the middle. It's a great statement about our concern for libraries. Norfolk had $25 million. The Battens were generous enough to make that uh, 25 plus 40, so it's a $65 million library. So it's an entirely different place. So it's an extraordinary gift, a remarkable gift, but uh, it changed the dynamics completely. There are really two pillars of this community. One is the Battens uh, family, and the second is the rest of us. I mean, they are, without a doubt, the most generous, well-intended benefactors in the long history of this city. And we are, uh, you know, a much better community because of them. They were very supportive of the expansion of the Botanical Gardens and the Children's Garden there, and then uh, at the zoo. At the zoo, it would be about half its size right now uh, if it weren't for Frank and Jane being so generous. They've given great sums of money to higher education. You know, it's very involved in, in an early childhood preschool education. They've also given to public education in the form of the Sailing Center, for instance, uh, over at Nauticus. Ms. Batten's contribution to downtown Norfolk the Slover Library, to sail Nauticus to Nauticus to our waterfront is tremendous. It's absolutely tremendous. Right now behind us, these kids are on these boats. Um, they're kids from all over Norfolk, kids that frankly might not have a chance um, to get on the water anywhere else. Uh, and they're here because of her. And these are Miss Batten's kids. 
downtown is such a, a dynamic place now and it's got so much energy and to have this building kind of be a center of Plume Street, which has not always been a, a street that had much activity on it. So this is part of the grand plan of re-energizing the area around MacArthur Square and Plume Street in particular. I had a couple of early conversations with both Jane and Frank about the Slover Library. And um, Frank wanted to make sure that this was the most technologically advanced library in the country. And Jane wanted that too. But she also wanted the building to make a statement about who we are, what kind of community we can be. So there had to be a wow factor to the library. And she was very involved in selecting all of the consultants and the experts who would give us advice. I have not seen this kind of undying and relentless commitment right from the go. Mrs. Batten was involved with the planning of it, with the design, with hiring the architects, with the space uh, analysis, with um, not only financially contributing in a major way, but also throughout and through, uh, seeing through the challenges of the building, and even now after it's been opened. So she has been just wonderful. Mrs. Batten was a frequent visitor to the library. Often uh, we even kept a hard hat with her name on it so uh, she could go through. And the visits she would make, even construction laborers working on the job got to know who she was when she was coming through the buildings. I don't know, she's hard to describe. <laughs> but she just is, is just a great woman. She's not a, she's not, doesn't represent any stripe. You couldn't ask for a better downtowner for 2015 than Jane and our new library. This uh, building is a uh, is so important in the redevelopment of downtown and her involvement uh, intimately in its construction and its design certainly uh, you know merits uh, any award for anybody in downtown and certainly uh, Jane is uh, the, exactly the appropriate person to be the downtowner of the year and probably any other year you want to call it. The best way that we can say thank you to Jane Batten is by filling this building with the citizens of Hampton Roads. The truth is the Battens don't care to be thanked. They think this is part of their civic obligation. This is what they think their role in this community is. Thank you! This is actually my first time and uh, it's been a great experience just exploring the options. Uh, I just came upstairs, got my first library card, so... Uh... Jane Batten, thank you very much for uh, you and Frank making this happen. I love it. Everybody appreciates it. Yeah, from the time it opens to the time we cut that ribbon to now, it's like I see the smiles and different expressions on people's faces. You made a big difference in a lot of people's lives. Um, you've helped create a space for downtown that's bringing more people downtown. I can see the difference. On behalf of all the families and people, patrons that enjoy the library, just thank you. Like, it's amazing and they tell me every day that I'm lucky to work here, and I am. 